understand this. The kingdom family and the family structure in the home. Uh, last week, I probably administered one of the most uh, challenging messages I've ever preached in my life. And I've been preaching over 35 years. And uh, I'm only 52, so I started early. But uh, it was probably one of the most challenging messages I've ever preached. The role of a father. And I ask not because of me, but uh, people need to know and hear. But I believe there's something God wants to do in and through the family. The kingdom family as well. And when families are held together, yes. we will see a change in our land. Yes. So we've been preaching from this series, a family thing today. Our message today is entitled, When Mothers Are Born. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word. 1 Kings chapter 3. Thank you, brother. Verse 19. When mothers are born. Thus reads the scripture, This woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. Somebody said, When mothers are born. Father, I thank you for your Word, and I pray for the next few moments. You would help us. Bless us, encourage us, Father, that we might be able to touch heaven and bring it down to the people. Don't let us escape. We need you. We need you desperately. You have to help us. We have no other source. We can't rely on degrees or books or commentary. We need the help of your spirit. So Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would hide me from there and open up the ears of your people. Let us not be so busy to try to push this off on someone else, but let us realize the road by which we've been called to, that we might honor you. Give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to react. I get you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you for honoring the word of God by standing. Is the highest authority in the earth. We have one of those stories that has been mostly used for the most part to display the great wisdom that Solomon was given by God. He was given it by request. How'd you like God to show up in a dream and ask you what you want? <laughs> oh yeah, some of y'all like to hear you now. And it's what this man asked for that that really, the Bible said, please God. Mm. He asked for wisdom. Yeah. Prove he was people's king. Because he wanted what would help him to be a blessing to the people. Those of you who know the story, First Kings chapter 3, after he got everything set up, God showed up to him in a dream, asked him what you want. He said, you have set me up over such a great people these are your people. Uh, give me wisdom that I might be able to be right and true to your people. Yeah. I stopped right there and wish, Lord, well, I wish we had preachers like that today. Thank you. Care enough about the people. Mm. They want to do right by the people. Yes, sir. That grips us right there. Mm. Many of you have been hurt and abused, and some of you are there that even want to go back to church. Gave God one more try. Because you've been so hurt. Mm. Solomon said, I don't want people to be hurt. Give me a wise yeah. understanding heart. Yeah. Some of us would have said, Lord, I need a million dollars. <laughs> Some of us would have said, Lord, give me that house I've been coveting over there yeah. so long. No. That's a truck I like. I like trucks. Come on now. It's a truck I bought. I can't afford it but since you're here in this dream. Nah. You know. Come on now. It's amazing what people ask for if you give them a blank check. Yes, yeah, so. Well, God was willing to meet him wherever he was at. Yeah. But he asked for the right thing that brought him everything. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Even though this is a story of wisdom. 
And he said it in 1 Kings 3 and 9, give your servant, if I'm your servant, mm -hmm. an understanding heart. Yeah, come on, brother. Why do you want to say anything to that? Mm -hmm. You need an understanding heart. Yeah. Yes, sir. Give him an understanding heart. Come on now. So that he can judge the people. Mm -hmm. Like the desire between good yes, and bad. Mm. But who is able? Mm. Who's able to deal with your people? Yeah. I've been dealing with God's people a while now, and I know mm. you need wisdom. Mm. You need to know what to say, when to say. Yeah. I've had to apologize to folks because mm. I didn't say the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> didn't say the right thing at the right time. Mm. It's amazing. <laughs> These are God's people. And you know, I'm the kind of person if I feel like I offend or hurt, I'm not too big to say I'm sorry. Because I care about God's people. I left Jacksonville and went all the way to a church in the country. I preached that. When I found out I preached wrong just to get it right. I went with my pastor's approval to go back and say, hey, I, I said this and it was wrong. Take a man in. But you gotta want to do right. By God's people. Not everybody has that kind of desire. But this is Solomon. And he asks for it. He gets it. God gives it to him and he gives him wealth too. What he does not know, because it's unknowing to him, but it's known to God, is that he's going to be tested as soon as he can wake up. <laughs> you don't even get a chance to get anything else in. He's going to be tested as soon as he wakes up. Well, he wakes up. When he wake up, there come two women. The Bible says, 1 Kings 3.16, Then there came two women that were harlots under the king and stood before him. The one said, Oh my Lord, I am this woman to dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. Two women. Verse 18 says, And it came to pass the third day, after that, I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. Mm -hmm. And this woman's child died in the night mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. because she overlaid. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Verse 20 says, she arose at midnight. Mm -hmm. yes, Everybody sir. ought to be sweet. Now. Took my son from beside me uh -huh. while my handmaid was asleep mm. yeah. and laid it upon her bosom mm. and laid her dead child my, my, my. in my bosom. Mm. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, mm. behold, it was there. Yeah. But when I considered it mm. in the morning, behold, it was not my son mm. which I did bear. Come on now. Well, Verse 22 says, and the other woman said, she had nothing to say until right now. Uh -huh. The other woman mm. sounds like drama, don't it? <laughs> yes. The yes. other woman said, yes. come on, come on. Nay, the living is my son. And the dead yes. Is thy son. This she said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. What a way to come out of sleep. What a story to get into. Yes, sir. This ain't my baby. It is. It ain't my baby. It is. It ain't my baby. It is. Sound like Mommy Papa or one of them shows. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. This is not my child. Mm. No, it is yours. And here you are standing here. Mm -hmm. First thing I want to consider is the wisdom to discern God's people this man was given. Yeah. And the first to benefit from that wisdom is two harvests. Don't miss that. Mm -hmm. Solomon prayed for God's people so that he can discern between them. You wouldn't think two harlots would be considered God's people. Mm -hmm. 
You never saw that before. I didn't either. This man prayed for wisdom for God's people. You got to be careful who you counting out that God is already counting in. Many a time we look at what people are doing and we don't realize what God is getting ready to do in and through this. Don't make me tell my testimony. He came to the trade when Bond got me out of there. Come on now. True story. I can take you there and show you the spot. He came in there and got me out of there. Yeah. Surely he know how to come to somebody in something like this. Come on now. It's amazing to think God will yeah. deal with people church folks will have nothing to do with. Mm. Come on. That's why this church is so mixed up. We deal with everybody. Yeah. 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 We love everybody here. We preach to everybody here. Yeah. You don't have to put on anything to get here. Just get here. God will get to putting on and putting on. Yeah. Yeah. You all the rest of that. Just get here and get a word in. Yeah. 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 That's all you need. A little word in. Yeah. Oh, it's all over with. God will have you putting on, putting on, putting on, putting on. And you'll be glad about it. Here, two hearts are the first going to benefit. From a man that God gave wisdom, and we know he didn't have time to go to school and get a degree. He gave it to him just like that. Yes. And here they are, standing before this man, yes. arguing about a baby. Yeah, yeah. This story rocked my world. <laughs> as I look at it, I've seen this before, but as I look at it, in light of what God's done in and through us. There's some exacting facts here we need to look at. Mm -hmm. While they argue whether they were, and these are some scholars actually argue whether they were actual harlots, mm -hmm. and there's some that actually feel they were pregnated by the same man, that's why they were in the same house. Because mm -hmm. usually a harlot didn't share her house. You didn't Come catch that. Come on, that <laughs> Rahab didn't share her house. It was her house. Come on. Yes. She wasn't running that kind of house. It was her house, her business. Yes. Even though it wasn't the kind of business it was, but it was her house. They didn't do that back in that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's why some scholars argue whether or not these were actually hollow. But the Bible used the word, and in the Hebrew, the context carries the same. So we will safely say these are women with practices whether they were impregnated by the same man, end up pregnant. It's not hard to see that happening given to the practice they've embraced. In the spirit of a mother, there's only three days that separate them from birth. Mm -hmm. She has her baby, three days later she has hers. They both got pregnant right about the same time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in three days into motherhood, there is such a bond in between a mother and a child, she know the difference. Mm. She know what is not and what is. Come on. Come on now. The bond between a mother and a child is intense to yeah. the point mothers who experience while in their uh, womb, their baby in the womb, that uh, they put on the baby what's on them. This is why it is so important while mothers are pregnant, fathers, you keep them happy. Mm. Oh, yeah. Come you on keep now. them pleasant. <laughs> because the spirit of mom is going to get on that baby. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You irritate her, you irritate my baby. Yeah. You got to be careful how you treat her. Come on now. Keep her happy. Rub her foot. Buy her ice cream. Get her peanut butter. Whatever it is she needs. Serious, because emotions yes, sir. are yes, going to be transferred yes. to your baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spiritually, I've been pregnant, and I had to watch how I feel while I'm pregnant. Because mm. while I'm talking my baby, I don't want the wrong spirit. Come on. Uh, I know that's kind of bad for some of you, but come on, come on, some of you are the very baby I was talking and feeling all that pain. That's why you see me here today. But that, that's another message all to itself. And y'all just don't think men get pregnant, but I'm, 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 I'm pregnant now. Look at me. So I'm kicking in here. But, but that's, that's a whole other line. Here, but listen, while she is, 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 is impregnated and carrying this baby, she's feeling 
Now, now, now it, it don't take a rocket scientist to understand this. Number one, it feels the touch. Whatever mama touch, baby touch. Yeah. It feels touch. A baby feels the touch in its mother's womb. Whatever you're touching, it touch. That's why you be careful what you handle. Number two, babies hear and respond to sound, especially happy music. Any of y'all ever heard of the Suzuki method? Oh, all right. The Suzuki method, over there in Japan, they have a method called the Suzuki method. They take headphones of the kind of music they want this child to have an ear for. And if they want a child to play a violin, they pump that music into the belly of the mother. And that kid develop an ear for that instrument. And when he is born, they put it in his hand. And he already has built within him the proclivity to learn and play that instrument because it's been pumped in his belly. Oh. Ah. Yes, yes, there was something yes, pumped in me before I was born. I had no choice in it. God called me before my mother's womb, before yes, anything yes, took place. Yes, God had yes, already ordained me. Yes, All of the other avenues I've been through were just in his making to get me where he yes, wanted me to be. That's why he looked at Jeremiah and said, before I formed you, yes, before I put anything in you up, I already knew you and had already ordained you to be a prophet. Yes, sir. I already called you well. Yes, sir. Already had you set aside. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Babies hear and respond to sounds. Mm. And when Michael was in Wanda's womb, we listened to so much music. Talked to him. Come on. Prayed over him. Yeah. Told him I couldn't wait for him to get here. I used to look at her stomach when it was just kicking and jumping. Man, he was beating drums in there, I think. <laughs> it was moving. It was moving. He about the most active thing I ever seen in the room. We had a lot of fun while she was pregnant with all three of our kids. I kept her happy. If she wanted pie, I brought pie. If she wanted a cookie, I got her a cookie. She was going through so much salt, she was craving the salt for some reason. I kept the salt. Whatever you want, just stay happy. And I don't want no mean, fussing baby. I know we're laughing, but I'm telling you. Mothers who've experienced trauma and emotional discourse when their baby are delivered, they're screaming all night and they're not happy. Their spirit is uneasy because you created an atmosphere of hell and birth them in it and wonder why your baby can't keep calm. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole nother message. But baby does hear. Check that Suzuki method out. It's proven. I don't know how Mike will end up with drums because I was playing bass. And I was wanting him to be a bass player. And when he was born, it looked like all he could see was drums. We'd be up to praise team. I'd show Mike, look at the bass. Drums, bass, drums, bass, drums. I finally gave up. I wasn't going to win. I wanted a junior, you know. Boom, boom, boom. This boom came another way. Babies love hearing their mother's voice. While in the womb. You mothers that have been pregnant, no, you don't talk to that baby and you can tell they heard your voice that they move when you talk. Yeah. There's a mother in here, know what I'm saying? Say amen. amen. Talk to that baby. Tell them sometimes, you need to be still. Get off my back. Come on, now. Come on. Come on, now. Y'all know it. Am I right, mothers? Push my back out. Babies love hearing their mother's voice. This is all proven. I got this off Google. I Googled this. So I ain't just come up with this. But it's true. Mm -hmm. Babies love hearing their mother's voice. Yeah. And there is a distinction between mother's voice and any other voice. Yeah, they know it already in the womb. Come on. Babies bond to mothers in a way no one else, even a mother who has had a child, Never know. Nobody bonds with your child like you. Because of your uniqueness that God designed. And you carry them. 
This, this ministry, nobody can feel it like I feel it because I carried it. It was yeah. seated in me. Amen. God took me through nine months of labor. Yeah. Yeah. It was more than months. Mm. It was years of labor. Yeah. Labor pains were tough. Mm. Yes, it is. And my wife keep telling me I don't know what it's like, but I believe I do. Mm. Yes, sir. I do. Spiritually. Yes, sir. Wow. What it means to burn something yeah. that never existed. Now. And feel the pain of that and the bond between it. Yeah. There's something there that you can't, can't explain to nobody else. Yeah. Moms bond to babies bond to mothers in a way no one else. Mm. And even another mother who is bonded to her child don't know the exact way you have bonded to yours because God designed that to be unique in and of itself. Moms bond baby to family. Somebody says it's a family thing. It's a family. Mothers bond babies to family while in even the womb. I've seen mothers, come on up there, baby. Little four-year-old kid, come up. Mama, what's that? That's a baby. And little girls, especially, they're so happy. There's a baby. And I'm going to have a little sister or a little brother. They want a little sister so bad so they can do hair. <laughs> but the excitement, they talk to the baby. Mother is the channel by which fathers and siblings bond to their baby. Mary greeted Elizabeth. Both of them were pregnant. Yeah. Both of them were pregnant. I'm going to show you this in the scripture. Yeah. Both of them were pregnant, but the babies. Come on now. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost together. Come on. Come on. Come on. That much power in one room ain't going to be able to keep still. Yeah. The Bible said Mary greeted Elizabeth and the baby heard it. And as soon as the baby heard it, she leaped for joy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you today, y'all, I feel a little churchy here, but I don't want to be around anybody that can't make my baby jump. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want nobody that can't make me jump into vision and destiny and birth whatever it is God has put in me. When Mary greeted Elizabeth, the baby in her womb, the Bible said leap for joy. Yeah. Yeah. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 44, as soon as the voice of the salutation was heard in your ears, the baby leaped in my womb, she said. He couldn't help it. It wasn't controlled. It leaped. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't just leap. It leaped for joy. Yeah. I like that. Leap for joy. <sighs> Staggering numbers I found. 3,500 babies died in the United States mm. in 2018 mm. in sleep-related deaths. Mm. And among the ways they died, overlaying was some of them. Were mothers who had babies in their bed, who rolled over on their baby in their sleep yeah. and killed the babies. Mm. So this is not unfamiliar. This is why doctors encourage cribs yes, sir. and little sectionals that divide you from baby. Yeah. Well, Tawanza was smart. Baby slept with us, all three of them, but she wouldn't let them get by me. <laughs> I had that much of the bed. She had that much. The baby had the rest. And she had this little wedge thing. She put the baby between. And because of the kind of mother she was, I don't care what the rolling and snowing I did, it wasn't in the baby ear, and it wasn't close to her. She kept a distance, a safe distance. 3,500 babies died just in 2018. That's staggering. Sleep-related illness uh, causes. Be it the baby was laid wrong and all kind of things. And they say, now, this is a little side note. Can I chase it? Can I chase it? Is it okay? A little side note. Can I chase it? They say you need to lay a baby on his back to sleep. That's what the statistics they show. And I can't understand that. What if a baby throw up? And they can't roll over themselves. I mean, I, I, I just, some of these things I just don't understand. And I couldn't get no sleep thinking my baby laid on his back and the possibility might happen if that happened. So I, I, I couldn't sleep thinking of that. But the things they say, they prove them and know that's the way to do it. 
due to the nature of this situation, it is an immediate situation that calls for immediate justice and demanding. And we certainly need some wisdom. I want to focus not just on the wisdom, but on these mothers. Besides, it is, say it with me, a family thing. A family thing. Somebody has stooped to the lowest of the lows and must be found out. How low can you go to take your dead baby, pull it out, take somebody else's baby, pull it in yours, and give them your dead baby? Somebody done stoop pretty low. How low can you go? Come on. That's pretty bad. First Kings 3.19, let's look at it again. And the woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. This is her reason for it. And she arose at midnight. This is low, y'all. She arose at midnight. Took my son from beside me. A lot of questions arise in my little mind while I was asleep and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in mine. Was it a careless act? It remains yet to be proven. Accidents do happen, but to go to the step uh, one of these mothers is willing to go is beyond reason. Someone's carelessness killed their baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they want the other one to suffer because of it. Some preachers kill their ministry. And they want other ministries to suffer for it. Some people fall and they're not used of God like they used to. And they want others to suffer for it. I've seen it. Yes, sir. Yes. Nothing worse than a bitter saint. Mm, whose own choices wow. has created the atmosphere by which yeah. they cannot be no longer used until something is made right. Yeah, yeah. This woman's dilemma is her dilemma, but she's willing to make it somebody else's. Because misery always loves misery. Yeah. Always want to pull somebody else. Mm -hmm. Be careful of people who want to pull their misery onto you yeah, yeah. and make it a part of your life. Somebody's carelessness has killed their baby. While we see so many mothers today who neglect their role as a mother and they're killing the baby. So many have aborted their role as a mother. Even though they haven't had an abortion or they haven't overlaid their baby, but their choices are just as bad and they're killing their baby. Just let that soak in for me. How does a mother get so caught up in her own self that she neglects her baby? Overlaying it with the responsibility of something that should not be a responsibility to her. And while yet we see some of the most insane stories some of the most insane things imaginable. And the stories keep getting more and more tragic. Mothers leaving the baby for a party. Baby find a gun. Shoot himself. Shoot his brother. I preached a funeral in Daytona for a six-year-old boy. Got shot in the head by his five-year-old brother because the mother rather be out doing crack. I had to preach that funeral. I had the eight-year-old sister come tap to me, asking me where her brother at. One of the most difficult things I ever had to deal with. The tragedy of a loss because a mother refused to be the safeguard God has called her to be. Mothers who neglect their children to have a man in their life. Mothers who actually neglect their children to have a man that don't really care about her or her children because if he cared about her, he would care about how she cared for her children. And would a real man now would not want you to put him above your children. Yeah. The Bible speaks of silliness going on, and I tell you, we live in a day and age where some of these women are just outright silly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Neglect their children to have a man in your life.
One story was given of a woman who actually allowed her boyfriend to beat her child. It happened in Jacksonville. The child died because he wouldn't stop screaming. She sat there and watched him beat her baby because the baby wouldn't stop screaming. What are you doing so important? And how naive are you to sit here and let a man beat on your baby till he died? Because he won't stop screaming. Anybody in here have a baby? Let me see your hand. How many times you heard your baby screaming? You didn't beat them. You nurtured them. You loved them. Yes, sir. Something about a mother's voice got a quieter screaming baby. Yeah. Sometimes Michael was screaming and I was holding him, but when mama grabbed him, he quiet right now. <laughs> There's something in a mother that brings healing. Yeah. All of our children was like that. Yeah. Just to hear her voice and hold her, hold them in arms, brought peace out of their confusion. How do you let somebody come in between that? There's a phenomenon in the land today where we see women aborting their role as mothers and they're doing it willingly and gladly and forgiving. And God said it ought to not be. In Isaiah 49 and 15, he said, Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion? And it's interwoven even in the scriptures that you ought to have compassion for your child. And I don't care, Mother Roberts, if she were here, she would tell you her babies were 60 and 50 years old and she would tell them, they're my baby. And they're like, Mama, I'm big. Yeah, but you my big baby. Because you never stop being my baby. I don't care how many times you grow up. I don't care how many years pass by. You are still my Come on, say it with me. Somebody say, I'm her baby. I'm her baby. My mother dead and gone, but I'm still her baby. Can a woman forget what are the possibilities that they do? They do, and we saw it even in Scripture, yeah. where the roles of mom is so important, the compassion that is there is so important. The Lord said, I'm going to use it to illustrate my love. He said, can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? This is the one she carried in her womb. That's why you don't feel about my children like I feel about them because they are a product of their mother's womb. They are a product of our house, a product of our lineage. There's a special love and care. That's why when the sister was standing up there talking about her daughter, this is the daughter, she told it in her womb. They bonded before anybody else bonded. They bonded. This is why we you talk about the delivery in this situation. You can't help but expect some breakdown sometimes. Yes, Lord. Look at yes, somebody Lord. tell them, this is my baby you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. My baby you're talking about. The Lord said, though they may forget, yes. because the possibility stands that mothers will abandon their role and they will abort the very child they carried for nine months. He said, though they will, the Lord said, I will never Get you. Thank you. This is why the Lord said, when your mother and father will save you, yeah. the Lord will take you up. Yeah. You're never without a mother. You're never without a father. He'll be a father to the father. He'll be a mother to the mother. And when everybody else leaves you, if you need a mother's love, God will show up. If you need a father's love, God will show up. And he'll prove to you, I am your exceeding great yeah. reward. Clap your hands and give it praise. I am. Can a mother forget? Yeah. We see it all the time. Yeah. Some of us have tried to tell them, won't you go home? Mm. Go home there to your children. Mm. The Lord said, I'll never forget. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. There's been men who raise children, but they can never be mothers. What kind of compassion should a woman have for her child? The kind that would protect them. I don't mean to be gross when I read this, but this is in the Bible. In 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 28, Elisha has prayed and said, Let there be no rain or dew. 
There's a famine in the land. Desperate times, people do desperate things. Two women together. And now we have a dilemma here you never would have thought you would read in the scriptures. Some of you might have never seen this before. A woman is screaming to the king while he's walking through the land. Yeah. And the king said, what do you want? What's ailing you? She's screaming the different kind of cry. She's answering and said, this woman said unto me, give me thy son that we may eat him today. Let that soak in for me. Yeah. We're going to eat him today. Mm -hmm. We'll eat yours tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What kind of deal is somebody making here? Yeah. What kind of deal are we making? Now, why y'all looking at that and thinking gross? You better think twice before I come down your alley because I'm coming in a minute. Mm -hmm. But let's look at this and then we'll talk about you. She says here, I made an agreement with this woman. We'll deal with her son today. We'll eat mine tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we boiled my son. At what point did you boil him? When he was screaming? Mm -hmm. You killed him? What did you do? Did you ignore the crowd when you popped him in the hot water? Come on. What was going on? What was going on? I know some of you are looking at me. I, I didn't mean to be gross, but some of y'all are doing the same thing. You just ain't sticking them in the water. You sticking them in front of TV. You sticking them in front of social media, and you killing your baby. And you not made an agreement. Let's do this. We're gonna let them have this, that, and the other. And you're wondering why kids are growing up so psychologically dysfunctional because you're killing your baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We look at this and we want to throw up. Don't want to go eat now. Well, let's think about what we're doing with our children. Yes. What are you opening them up to? What are you inviting them to? What are you saying is okay that God says is not okay? Yes. Yes. What are you doing to your children? Yes. What are you doing? Thank the Bible says you ought to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Yes. Train them up in the way they should go. We made a deal. We're going to eat ours. We bought her son and we ate him. How did you sit and do that? Mm. You're doing some Jeffrey Dahmer kind of stuff here. Mm. How did you do this? How did you, how did you get so hungry? A child, your child, you told it in your home. Come on, y'all. How did you get so desperate you were willing to sacrifice your own child? Give him up to death and then sit down and eat. No, no, no. I'm glad you see this in the Bible. This King James. This ain't new ESV or none of that. We bawled him and didn't eat him. She sat with another woman, Sister Queen, and David, Brother David, her baby. You can't invite me to a table like that. No, no, no. You can't enter me into a deal like that. No, no. Some of you mothers will go gangster. If somebody even said something like that yeah. to you, we'd have to come get you out of jail. <laughs> we'd have to come pull you off of whoever it was had the audacity to open their mouth and say something like that. Because I am a child of God. He knows how to feed me. I ain't got to go crazy to eat. I ain't got to do the unthinkable in order to make it. God know I'm hungry and I got to let my stomach stop protruding. You're not killing my baby. You're not going to take my vision. You're not going to take my ministry. You're not going to take what God is birthing me. Because he has begun a good work. He's faithful. We got to let it grow, y'all. God got to pay it for it. He is faithful. He is a faithful God. This was actually, yes, Lord. as we look at this, how gross this look. Because mm. the next day, Mama said, uh uh, mm. you're not going to eat my baby. Uh -huh. She hit him. Uh, I can live the bed too long, and now we're not eight years old. I'm not feeling bad. I'm sorry, I'm not hungry. I'm sorry, I'm not hungry right now. I'm full. All it is. She changes her mind, and she hides her baby. I preached a message one time, hiding Moses. I don't know if y'all remember that. We have to hide our children so they can grow. 
We have to keep them from stuff that will damage them so they can grow. We got to hide them so that they grow out. If she didn't hide this baby, we're going to boil him too. What you don't know is that this is God's people. And God promised them the word of God does not lie. God promised them way back when, if you ever turn on me, I will fix it when the times get so hard, you would do something stupid like this. Read Deuteronomy 28. I know y'all like the first 15 verses. Yes. But you got to go down to verse 54, 52, somewhere in there to get to this. He said, if you rebel, I'm going to curse you. Yeah. I'm going to curse you in the city. I'm going to curse you in the field. We like the blessed part. We want to hang out there. But God said, if you turn on me, I'm going to turn on you. And I'm going to curse you. I'm going to curse you in the city. I'm going to curse you in the field. I'm going to curse you in your basket. I'm going to curse you in your womb. I'm going to put diseases on you. We act like we ain't supposed to never get But God. And when Israel got in trouble, God reversed the role and he put a curse on them. And in the heat of famine, a mother did the very thing God said in Deuteronomy they would do. Yes. They would eat the very woman, the child, and come out the womb. Yeah. <laughs> this is a clear picture of the mother aborting her child. Uh -huh. The willingness to destroy her baby. Mm -hmm. How do a mother ignore the cry of a baby? Mm -hmm. How do you get him in the pot? Mm -hmm. Did you kill him first or just stuck? You know, I put crabs in the pot. Mm -hmm. If I ever put crabs in the pot, yeah. we don't kill them. We, we let them. Just, we watch that too, don't we? Y'all yeah. murderers. Y'all stick them in there and watch them. Them. <laughs> I ain't the only one. Come on, Connie. Y'all stick them down in that hot water and they, they Jumping there, trying to fight that water. You done pushed them on down and die. Bunch of murderers. A crab is one thing, but your baby is a whole nother ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What'd you do? Kill him first, then stick him in the car. Think about this. I know it's gross to even think. <laughs> Some of these babies so big, I guess they had to get a big old pie. That's, that's, that's tragic. 4,000 babies are aborted every day in America. Let that number sink in. This is 2019 and we're only a couple of months in, but over 9 million babies have already been aborted in America. We're not halfway through the year. Mm. Folks, we're in trouble. Yeah. Planned Parenthood is set up in neighborhoods poverty stricken. Yeah. And they willingly yeah. will provide this service. Yeah. Yeah. Races are wiped out. How does a mother get restored to the role of motherhood? Mm. Our study in Titus helps us greatly. Why well, gave us the, the actions and the behavior of aged women. We're hurting for these kind of women. Titus 2 and 3, the Bible said these aged women will teach the younger women. These aged women will teach the younger women that, that they be in good behavior as becoming holiness, mm -hmm. not false accusers, yes. that they may teach young women to be sober, yes. to be sound in their thinking. Yes. When you teach a mother, you help her understand her role. And when mothers abort their role, Nobody suffers like the baby. Yes. Some of you grew up, mama wasn't there. Yeah. You know the damaging effect of that. You know what it's like to be unprotected. Yeah. While you're being molested, screaming for mama, and mama ain't there. Mm. 
Are you being taken advantage of? You're screaming for mama. Mama ain't there. Solomon stands out as he has no other choice but to create a crisis mm -hmm. to reveal both their hearts. Yes. He creates a crisis. Yes. Here's what he says. Mm -hmm. First Kings 3.24 Bring me a sword. Bring me a sword. Mm -hmm. yeah. They brought him a sword and he said Divide the living child in two. Mm -hmm. Give half to one and half to the other. Mm -hmm. This is actually an Old Testament law for how land disputes would be handled. For in the Old Testament, if there was a dispute between land and they couldn't find out exactly who or what, they would divide it and give half to one and half to the other. And that settled the dispute. So he's using this old law to reflect the baby. Because within the wisdom God has given him overnight, he knows that a real mother will let it go. A real mother is going to be willing to keep her baby alive. No matter what he done, where he at, she'll do what she got to do. So in this Old Testament law, both the parties are going to receive a potion, but the the mother who is willing to give up a baby in order for him to live quickly aborts mm -hmm. her own child. Yes. She's willing to abort her rights to her child. This is where the gospel is going to come in play, y'all. Mm -hmm. She's quickly willing to abort. Now before, she was willing to fight for her baby. Yes. She was willing to go to hell and back for her baby. She was willing to go before the king yes. for her baby. Yeah. Yeah, somebody say, I'll fight for you. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, but the moment it means you got to die, I'm willing to give you up so that you can live. Yeah. i never forget, I went to the jail to preach, man. When I got to the jail, Chris, I stood there with Keith and all of them. I felt safe with them because, you know, when you go to the jail to preach back then, they put you in a room with all the comments and they close the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had, I had Keith and Brother Arthur with me, so I was safe. But I stood right there and I said, this is the best thing could have happened to some of y'all. You should have seen the eyes I got. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah. Some of them didn't like that, but they had to hear it. This is the best thing that could have happened to some of y'all. Now your mother know where you're at. Now she can finally sleep and realize that you're not under a bench somewhere that robbed somebody. Or somebody looking for you because you're old money and they're ready to blow your brains out. Somebody knocking up on my door saying you got their daughter pregnant and they mad at you or you done did something stupid. Now I finally can get some rest because even though you're not where I want you to be, at least you're somewhere safe. And I know that where you are, you're going to be all yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Woman is willing to give up her right. Mm. I'm making bad. I'm not trying to make bad on any of our children mm -hmm. who end up in the system because it's not a good thing. Yeah. But at least we know for the first time, mm -hmm. maybe you can think right now. Your mm -hmm. head can get clear. Mm -hmm. You think maybe you can realize you made a bad choice and don't make no more. There are brothers who realize that after they got shut down. Amen. Some of y'all glad even though you didn't go to jail, God shut you down. And after he shut you down, you were able to think and consider, I need to change my ways. Give me a moment and I'll get out of here. Bring this one. Let's divide. She quickly aborts child. She's willing to give her child to a liar. Yes. A liar. Yeah. A thief. Yeah. A conniving Jacob. I heard somebody say Jacob. Jacob yeah. spirited woman. Yeah. What kind of raising that child gonna get? It's gonna be dysfunctional, but at least it's gonna be alive. Yeah. He's gonna be on a jacked up home. I know that already because she's a liar, she's a thief, she's a conniver, but at least he's gonna be alive. Yeah. And sometimes we give up just so that they can live, amen? Come on, yeah. All right, well. Solomon's in a tough spot. Yes, he is. See, now we can draw your blood and through data, mm -hmm. DNA, we can find out yeah. who's the father, yeah. who's the mother. Uh -huh. You ain't got to lie like that now. We'll get some blood work and we'll find out who's the daddy. Yes, 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 yes. All you brothers, I hate my baby, we can find out. Sorry, <laughs> Papa, and we can find out. Yeah, man, we can find it out now. 
Solomon didn't have that opportunity. He couldn't draw no blood. There was no DNA test, no other way to prove who the mother is. What do you do? Flip a coin? They all the same nationality, so you can't look at the baby and say, that's a black baby, that's a white baby, not an angel baby, no, no. Michael came here looking so much like me, I knew I couldn't go to no judge talking about this guy. He kicked me out. Tell me go sit down somewhere. He just had to head everything, just like me. You know, they say possession is 90% of the law. Mm. Wow. So if she was in possession of the living baby, he could say, well, you the one with the living baby, it's yours. Yeah. But what if you took the baby from both of them? It wouldn't be right. Wow. So I have to find out mm -hmm. by willingness of the night. Mm. Verse 26. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king. For her bowels, this is the difference here. Mm -hmm. Her bowels, her inside, the inner part of her where that baby came out of, mm -hmm. yearned upon her son. Yes. There's something there, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yearned upon her son. And she said, oh, my Lord. And I told you, when you see that word, oh, mm -hmm. don't, don't just casually go by there. Mm -hmm. You have to stop and get a sandwich. It's a sandwich there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big one, too. Stack with me. That one letter O is the divide, dividing factor between all of these statements. Look at it again. Then spake the woman who the living child was. This is the real mother standing up. The real mother. She yearned inside and she hollers, Oh! Yeah. It wasn't that little stuff. It's my baby on the line now. Oh! It's my ministry on the line now. Everything I've perked is on the line now. I told it this. All in my... Oh! That in the midst of the swinging of the knife, the mother hollered, Oh, stop right there. Don't do it. You don't have to do it now. I'll give up my right so that he can live. I don't have to have him in my possession just as long as I know he's all right. I'll give it up so that you can go forth and not kill my baby because I went through too much to have him, too much pain to have him. I was kicking and hurting. I was going to the bathroom all night. I was torn off. My mind was talking to me, I was thinking about ministry every day of my life. I couldn't sleep, couldn't think. I was preaching in the shower. Everybody was saying, what are you doing, man? You're going crazy. But I was crazy. I had a vision. I had a dream. I had a destiny to fulfill. And you can't kill it like this. You can't stop like this. I've been through too much. I've come through too far. And he never got a good word. somebody else baby. Wow. But kill it. She don't have the vision of that baby. Yeah. She don't have the passion of that baby. It didn't come out of her womb. That's why some people have been able to leave us heart to heart. But because they wasn't a part of the family and it's a family thing, they couldn't stay here and act like family. Because we are family. And when you're family, you birth into something greater. That's why when one daughter come up with cancer, we all got cancer. That's why when one person gets sick, we all want to get better. That's why when somebody is going through, we all going through. Because we want to see victory. Because we are family. And when we are family, I'm sorry, y'all, I got to holler a minute. We are family. We're going to be here together. We're going to cry together. We're going to laugh together. And when the enemy come in like a flood, the lion is going to lift up a stand. Somebody give God praise. Somebody clap your hands. The woman says, 
is oh my lord yeah. give her yeah. the living child yeah. and don't slay it the other woman said let it neither be mine or thine. Yeah. Look at this passage with me. One is willing to avoid. Yeah. The other one so he can live. While the other one says let it die. And there's some people that don't want you to live. They want you to die. Yeah. But you shall not die. You shall live. Yeah. You shall not stop. Halfway. You're going to finish the course. He's going to do it by his power. He's going to fulfill it. Somebody clap your hands. You're loved by a mother. A child is protected yeah. by whatever means necessary. A mother will sell her shoes so that you can have milk. A mother will give up her light bill and let the lights go out so that you cannot be sick. A mother will do it by her power. She'll go over troops and walls to make sure her baby is okay. She won't buy her no shoes, but make sure you got them on. She'll make sure you got clothes while she's still using hand me down. She'll make sure you eat it while nobody else is eating. She'll feed the baby first. Somebody help. Divine. As 
the mother had to give way to the will of the father. And all Mary could do was sit there and watch. God sits from on high, just like Solomon. And he discerns good and evil. Solomon is going to discern between what is right and wrong in this situation. God knows you. God knows you. What happened for Solomon is a prototype of Christ. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his wisdom. Solomon got the respect of the people because of the wisdom. Not his money, not his people's skills, his wisdom. Nobody wanted to come before a king like this. He got discernment. He knows how to figure out tough stuff. The Bible says all Israel heard it in verse 28 of uh, 1 Kings 3. All Israel heard mm -hmm. of the judgment yeah. which this king had judged. Mm -hmm. And they feared the king. Yeah. For they saw that the wisdom of God was in him. Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to get too close to preachers. Wow. They don't want to get that close to their pastor. Yeah. He might discern what's in you. Wow. Jesus. Come on now. Come on. Yes, sir. I never forget I was in Daytona or Ormond Beach. I showed up to this preacher house knocking on the door. Because it was me, I had to wait. You know why? He had to change the movie before I come in because he didn't want me to see him watching what he was watching. I told my wife, we can hear it. I'm like, you see what's going on? God's already in this room. You worry about me and God's already in here watching what you're watching. He sees what you're doing. You're trying to hide it from me. And God already saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He saw it in your heart. That's why you were welcome to turn it on. Mm -hmm. And why y'all so scared to get close to me? God is trying to get close to you. Yes, God. The willingness to get close to two harlots and give them judgment, yes. discernment, and wisdom mm -hmm. shows you he's not scared of you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, please hear my heart today. God's not afraid of you and whatever it is you're caught up in. Thank God. He yeah. already knows. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jesus. Mm. Who would want to come before a man like this? Thank you, Lord. Only people with good intentions. Yes. There are people that come through this church and they keep going real quick. Why? There's no hidden agenda here. There's no titles here. There's nothing for you to gain other than a close walk with God and to finally open up your Bible. Mm. That's all we got. We don't have no committees, no clicks. You ain't gonna be asked to sell one chicken. Thank you, Lord. You can cook it and bring it here, but we'll eat it. <laughs> You're not gonna be on the 12 tribes of who is that Judah? 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody raise money. You ain't gonna be called to do a Jericho march for a hundred dollars. Hundred women in white. Come on, keep your white bones and clothes, and let's get right with God. Come on, come on, come on. So sick of these traditions. I guess that's why they tell me I'm weird. Mm. I've been branded as weird in the, in the church neighborhood. Because I don't money swap. Well, I ain't got no money to swap with you, to be honest with you. You broke. My father is rich. I'm broke. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. God also creates a crisis. I'm almost done. He also creates a crisis that reveal our heart. See, when the sister found out after her daughter, what she didn't tell you, maintain a 4.0 or greater grade average all the way through school and won a trip to Europe for it. Got rudely interrupted yeah. with cancer. Travel. Yeah. Speak another language fluently. 4.0. Yeah. Future looked great. Got all these wonderful plans. I'm happy for her. We had her here. We put her up. And she gave us a presentation of her education learning and where she planned to go. And we were loving and supporting her from the beginning. Yes. And now this. Mm -hmm. Tell me God won't create a crisis that will show your heart. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> Our hearts sometimes is exposed to things we don't want to go through. Yeah. I call it like playing cards. Mm -hmm. The great dealer, God's the dealer. Mm -hmm. 
you know, anybody ever had to play cards before, spades, it was any kind of cards. Yeah. Everything lies on the dealer and what he gives you, right? Yes, sir. You ever been mad at the dealer before? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Deal. You ever wanted to shoot Miss <laughs> Deal. Miss <laughs> Deal. That's it, yeah, Miss Deal. Miss Deal. Maybe he. Cause what they call it, trick the deck, click the deck, or whatever. Something ain't right. I ain't got the winners. I don't have the winners. Something ain't right. I want to throw this back in. I ain't got no winning hand. My name Nelson. I'm supposed to have a winning hand. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how it is. My name is Chris. I'm supposed to have a winning hand. I'm not supposed to start all over again. A fire is not supposed to burn up my house. My daughter is not supposed to get cancer. This is not a winning hand. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. You got that in life? And everything in you wanted to throw this back up to the deal and say, I don't want this. I can't play with this. I don't have any winners here. 